the significance to me for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award is something that everything you do on and off the field is not for the recognition, but then you get recognized for it is kind of a catch-22. But at the same time, um, I think it's, ne it's never about the recognition or the award. It's really what you do with it or how you're able to use that for some good in the world. So I think the, the NFL does an amazing job highlighting the work and the purpose and the whys behind everything that we do on and off the field um, to be nominated by your organization. The people you go to work with every single day means the world. Um, similar to that captain sort of recognition, it's the people in the room that see you every day, going to work, how you go about it, why you do it. Uh, and then at the end of the day, I think it's a great opportunity to share the spotlight with so many causes, so many foundations, so many people, so many community members that are able to make something like this come to life. So I think it's very indicative of the hard work that's been going on for the, the past year and a half that I've been here, two years. Um, and, and it's really just the start. So I'm really excited for that recognition, that hat tip. Um, and I'm more excited about using it for some good. Um, to continue the work down here in South Florida? Um, that's a great question. I think that community um, that I grew up in, up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, was big. I think I saw a lot of NFL athletes taking that extra step in the community um, where I grew up in Wisconsin, and it, it takes a village. You know how many people, teachers, coaches, mentors, are giving you all of these life lessons from a, a number of different places, and then some someday down the line it clicks. So I think just that that the repetitive nature, the amount of role models in the community that you see on a daily basis, I think everyone really had a hand in that. Yeah, no, th those guys are tone setters, and they're two guys that, that joined the team this year, uh, and you immediately felt their presence throughout training camp. If I saw 51 and it was an inside zone and I had to go block that dude, I wasn't exactly too fired up about it. You know, he's, he's going to be coming downhill with everything he's got. And... Um, Deshaun Elliott the same way, the, the range that he plays with, the intensity that he plays with, um, it sets the tone for a lot of guys. And, and when you have role players like that, and I don't say that in a, in a, in a bad term, like the, the role that you master and you bring that you are building like a reputation around the league for, like that's a role player now. And like those guys are starting to build the reputation around the league. Um, you know, they have been, they brought it to the Dolphins. And now that the way that they're playing right now, it's uh, it's fun to watch on offense. You can hear it before you see it. And anytime you're on the sideline, you can hear a play. It's probably 51 or 21. So it, it's fun to, to hear that. 100%. And I think that's something where uh, you're battle tested. So it's, it's that approval. And that's that competition in training camp that nobody can shy away from. And when you have two units that are coming together and coming into their, their own during training camp during the, the month of August, when you're going at it, you know what everyone's about. You know that test happens one time, and you have to be ready to do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next week. So um, those really highly competitive periods throughout training camp and now um, going into the season still carrying a lot of those competition periods, I think it pays off in the long run. It's a good start. I think everyone knew walking into December we needed to, to make a run at this thing and be playing our, our best football heading into the tournament. So um, regardless of the seed or what everyone else does, I think it really just is encouraging to, to stay focused and locked in on your process and what you can do today because the wins and the losses from this past weekend or next week or the week after that doesn't change the approach that you carried into December saying it's time to improve, it's time to get better, it's time to start – uh, clicking on all cylinders, and I think that's the next opportunity that we have on Monday. If you carry that mindset, man, you can look back and say how cool the seating all played out or how the playoffs um, went, but it, it really is a challenge to stay in that microscope every single day and um, not pay too much mind to that. I, I think it really is inspiring the play caller and inspiring the teammates, right? It, you see a lot of guys throughout these, these past few weeks, um, the four-minute offense, the eight-minute offense, whatever we've turned it into, um, the approach and the mindset of finishing with the ball in our hands, either in victory or scoring a touchdown towards the end of a game, like that's how December football is won. So for us to be getting those reps now, to be inspiring each other as we're doing it, you're able to put it on tape, you're able to watch it, you're able to see where we need to get better, and it's like, okay, we can do this. This can be our brand of football that keep, people can expect and try and stop it. Like that's something we're growing towards, and we need to keep taking those steps. 
And it, it starts with practice and, and it starts with getting healthy so that if we're in the eye formation, we can go to empty. We can start an empty, we can go to the eye, we can move all, all around and then we can get to a short yardage or, or a normal down and distance. And it, it really doesn't matter. So um, I think all of those personnel groups, when it's heavy bodies, when it's four minute offense, like that's, those are all things that we're working on to improve on. And it, it's cool to see the boys, especially this last week, the last drive, um, you know, Mike White was in there. Tanner Connors out there in the backfield playing fullback, like seeing him uh, dropping the pads. It was really fun to see those guys run 13 straight run plays and, and score at the end. That was it was really fun to watch as a fullback. Yeah, I think there's a lot of wrinkles going into the ways that um, defenses are trying to defend our run or pass, our play pass. Um, so I think those those problems or those situations that come up in a game, it's really about staying focused, locking in on your training. You know, I think we have a great coaching staff that is preparing us to be ready for all of that. But in the heat of battle, if, if you're seeing something new, if there's a defender coming high to low or low to high or setting an edge from a different place, I think it's really putting that ego aside and realizing like what's happening on the field. We'll slow it down. We'll see it on the, the surface, on the sideline. And then we're going to make those adjustments in the game so that we can execute when we need to. So uh, I think it's a test on everybody Anytime there's new schemes, anytime there's new ways to, to problem solve uh, for guys to, to stay you know, locked in, emotionally in check, and to be able to be problem solvers, not problem creators, or pointing out the problem and not wanting to be a part of the solution. I mean, I, I sit behind that dude in all of our offensive meetings, all of our team meetings, and so I see his approach on a daily basis and um, the way he's locked in, the way... Um, you know, the, the notebook that he has, like, is unbelievable. There's, there's notes everywhere. And it's, it's kind of sporadic, but it's, it's everywhere. And it's all the time. And it's every day. So whether he's playing well or playing bad or people are pointing out this or that, like, his consistent approach is, like, exactly what everyone talks about on the process. So you see a dude 10 yards down the field running a three technique. Like, that didn't happen just because he just decided to one day. It's been that approach throughout the entire year, the entire time I've been here. Um, so it, it just really just exemplifies the process that everyone's bought in. Uh, everyone's dialed in and intentional every single day. So um, it, it can turn something as small as the intentional notes that you take in a meeting to then walking it through, to then practicing it, then putting it out on Sunday. And, and not being afraid that he's got to switch every single position on the offensive line. I think he's started all five now. Um, and being willing to, to take that on and, and be bold with that and not be afraid to fail and figure it out and then find his stride. Like, I mean, that's, that's everything in football. I think that's a beautiful part of the team game that we're playing. I mean, it's, it's never really, you know, the, the one thing about your character that you can speak on is how you respond to that adversity. Like ad adversity and change is, is the constant in life. And how you deal with that adversity or change is, is who you are as a man. And I think everything that he's taken in stride for as long as I've been here um, is top class. It, it's his character. He's, he's stayed strong. He's fighting the good fight. And it's just that flywheel of, of just keep pushing, keep pounding that rock until eventually it breaks. And um, hopefully this is just the beginning. Hopefully there's a lot more to come for, for the entire unit. Uh, okay. There's three questions now. Worst Christmas gift I ever got, um, my parents got me a fake thing of coal. You know, like, a, but it was like gum. It was like chewing gum, but it was like black licorice tasting gum. So I was all upset because I thought I got coal. Then they're like, oh, no, it's really gum. And then I put it in my mouth to try and chew the gum, and it tastes like black licorice, which is terrible. It's the worst flavor of gum. So I was emotionally upset, and then, you know, like the actual taste of it was terrible. So that was definitely the worst one. Best one, I got an Xbox 360. Um, you know, that was that prime, like, seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I was playing Modern Warfare 2 on that all the time with my guys. So as soon as I got that, I was excited. Uh, John Madden was on the cover for that first time. I, I forget what year that was. Uh, got the legendary edition, man. That was the best Christmas gift forever. And uh, no, I'm really excited that we get to play at home Christmas Eve. So Santa Claus is bringing the family in, you know, having the family over. Um, but we do a pretty good job with the gift exchange and everything like that. So I, I'm really excited to play in front of family play at home at Hard Rock Christmas Eve. It's going to be a fun one.